Hey everyone, my name is Anton. I'm a year HubSpot. Thank you all for being here. If you're anything like me, any session you attend here, you ask yourself, what is one takeaway I can take from here to be better at what I do? And if it's the case, I'll make it easier for you. It is productivity. And there are many definitions for productivity. But the most simple one, and especially relevant to us, data people, is doing more in less time. And I'm not even talking about traditional productivity here, where we fight our procrastination. You know, all these calendars, time blocks, to-do lists. No, not that. I'm talking about not doing it. Hear me out. We can do more in less time by not doing it. How about that? Good engineer is a lazy engineer. You probably heard that many times. And that's especially true today with all the tools and tech available to us now. Good engineers are too lazy to repeat themselves. They're dry. Good engineers are too lazy to do everything themselves. They offload their tasks, fully or partially. We have to be lazy to be good. So the number one takeaway from all this, there is always a room for us to be better at what we do, to be more productive by being more lazy. Whether it's AI, app, or, or an extension, it doesn't matter. If it makes me more productive, I'll take it. But there's a catch. I often hear, yes, AI, yes, LLM, ChatGPT, Copilot, that's all cool and fun when we play with it, but I have no idea how to apply it at my job to be more productive. We try it, we play with it, we leave it alone. It's not there yet, we say. You can probably relate to that, especially if you tried using ChatGPT and not pre-trained AI agent for your data needs. It simply doesn't work. And what I think is happening here, we either use the wrong task, not all the tasks offloadable in the same way, or we use the wrong technology. And what I mean is we try to offload offloadable task, but to the wrong tool. So how do we fix it? And my suggestion is we take a step back. We think of all the tasks on our plate and try to categorize them. As I said, not all the tasks offloadable in the same way. We need a framework. And here's an example. Let's say we're EE and this is what we do. We're analytics engineers and this is what we do. We do data modeling, we do data governance, we do troubleshooting, we manage our stakeholders and their expectations. Uh, and the list can go on and on. But this is more or less how our days or even weeks look, right? So if I take all these tasks and view them through the lens of our framework to break them down into these three buckets, now I can clearly see where should I start my offloading journey. And this is just an example, definitely not one size fits all framework. Whatever works for me here may not work for you. Whatever I have in my third bucket, you may have it in your second or even first bucket. And on top of it, this is a very dynamic space. Whatever holds true now may not be true in a month from now. Who knows, maybe one day we'll have AI model capable managing our stakeholders. That would be fun and nice, especially for us introverts, right? So that's why it is important to have a framework that works for you. Now that we took a step back, thought through all the stuff on our plate, broke them into these buckets, it is the right time to think of a tool or technology to outsource, to offload these tasks to. And this is what the original developer of dbt power user extension will emphasize on. Extension that helped me to be lazy all these years. Please help me to welcome Michiel here. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. Hi, everyone. I'm Michiel, the original developer of the DBT Power User Extension. So a few years back, uh, when I was an analytics engineer, just like you guys, um, I started writing DBT code in VS Code. It was so frustrating. Um, I really thought it might, would be much easier uh, if, if VS Code has a lot better support for it. So that's when I decided to start 
building the power user for dbt extension so later uh, I, I, I saw also the power of ai um, that not only could make the development much easier but also much faster uh, that's when i start uh, when i decided to join the ultimate founding team so nowadays our extension has been downloaded more than 200,000 times it's totally open source everyone can contribute you can find it on github see the link here um, so welcome to contribute so let me show you a few common scenarios uh, that uh, we do we, we have, do every day as an analytics engineer so the first scenario is developing a dbt model of course that's like probably where you spend most of your time so how many times did you uh, get your like a, a very complicated sql from an analyst that then they ask you can you convert this into a dbt model so that's what we're going to do so then we're going to like validating the db the, the, the business logic uh, and finally we're going to document the model so let me switch to vs code so imagine we're getting this query here from an analyst so what what do you do here we'll copy paste this into uh, vs code so let's say this analyst uh, asked us to build like a 360 view of the customers that we can see all the data related to customers in, in one view so typically this query will be much longer now it's very short but imagine it would be thousands of lines of code so the first thing like what we see here is like all these table references these are not dbt references so where is the time that you had to go through this thousand line of sql code and find every table reference and convert it to, to a reference not anymore you can simply uh, execute this action here sql to model and hub all the table references are replaced with a dbt uh, ref so then the next question is actually uh, what did this analyst actually send to me uh, let's try to understand what this query is doing so you can simply ask ai to do this that can save you a lot of time you know like imagine this is a really complicated sql uh, by getting some textual explanation what this actually is doing uh, can really save you a lot of time so let's have a look so basically this explanation will go through all the cte's and tell in natural language what this actually is doing uh, and you can also ask some follow-up questions to get a better understanding okay so you don't have to decipher the whole sql by yourself uh, data pilots can help you uh, understand this query better so what's next so the first thing that we would probably do is like executing this query like uh, that we know that actually this querying is actually working so let's do that so within dbt power user you can find this uh, query results uh, and you can quickly uh, check the results of your query so what we see is on first sight this query looks a lot like the existing dashboard that we already have under customers but well, let's ignore that for now let's give the analyst what he wants so next thing what we will do is actually uh, we're gonna uh, document this uh, this model so to do that we first need to build the model so let's do that so yeah we're crunching to all these lines of uh, records so done okay cool so now that we have built a model we can go to documentation editor uh, and this is really useful right so you can actually sync with the database and then you get all the columns that are available in the database and you can start documenting them so documentation who here likes to uh, to write documentation no one 
<laughs> that's what exactly what I thought. I really hate writing documentation actually. So with the AI, now you can simply generate the documentation. So as you can see here, I generated this documentation. Again, this might not be completely how you like it, but at least gives you a bit of inspiration. So let's then generate a documentation for all of them. Okay, our work is done. So what we realized is that uh, AI, the, the, the documentation that is generated by AI can be quite generic. Uh, but there is a solution for that. Now within our product, you can actually teach our AI uh, about your uh, like own company terminology or, or conventions. So let's try to do that. So imagine here, like we have a customer ID and this table is customer 360. Uh, let's teach this, this is actually the primary key. So if the column name starts with the documented table, and ends with ID, consider or mention this is the primary key of the table. So let's coach the AI. So basically, this will reformulate this uh, in, a, in a way that uh, the AI can better use this to identify columns as primary keys in dbt model documentation if the column name starts with a table name and ends with underscore id to ensure clarity and consistency in data model description so let's save that so now that we coach the ai now let's try to regenerate so actually you see that now this is uh, mentioned that this is a primary key. So with this feature, you can, you can save a lot of time uh, uh, as, as you get like, a, as, it, as, it, as the more the system learns about your uh, terminology and, and conventions, the documentation that is being generated is smarter and smarter and saves you more and more time. So to summarize, um, with this new feature, uh, we can you can actually uh, teach our AI uh, to give you a, a more personalized documentation that is uh, like uh, tailored to your uh, company or to your your own taste. Now let's move on to another very common use case within DVT development: testing and troubleshooting. So. Uh, imagine you get waken up in the middle of the night uh, because you're on call uh, and you have to look at some issue. Of course, you rather want to continue sleep than uh, looking into some uh, very complicated issue while uh, half sleepy. So, uh, so basically, if AI can help you here, that would be really great. So what we want to do here is like we want to understand the issue and assess the impact. If possible, we want to solve the issue. Uh, and as cherry on the cake, we want to prevent it from happening again. So let's have a look on in VS Code how we can do that with uh, our extension. So imagine uh, our customer reported some issue with the customer 360 dashboard that we just built. He's mentioning, uh, he's telling us uh, this, uh, this, this uh, customer lifetime value that you just uh, reported, um, this is wrong. It is, uh, when we look at our financial records, this value is much lower for some customers. So the customer lifetime value, uh, let's have a look at that. Uh, so this is uh, this field here. So how we can investigate this? Uh, we can use the lineage. So let's have a look here at the lineage. So we see here the customer lifetime value is a, a column within the customer 360. And by clicking it, we can actually have a look at the column level lineage. So this way we can like look how this uh, column is built. We can also have a look at the code. So what we see here is that it is just a summation. So 
this looks correct. I don't think uh, there can be anything wrong. We're just summing up uh, the amount. Okay. Let's also have a look at this one here. So here, uh, what what is the code? We are actually just dividing it by 100. Um, so it is in cents. Okay. So that also looks uh, correct. So this is actually coming from the raw payments, which is a seed file. So probably the issue is in our source system. So if we want to fix that, we probably have to fix it in the source system. Um, so now, like, let's get back to our customer, explain him what is happening and what's the impact. So for that, we recently released a new feature, which is notebooks. So let's have a look at some notebook to help us troubleshooting this issue. So the cool thing about notebooks is that you can actually combine uh, TBT and, uh, and Python. So uh, what you can see here, uh, we we look we are looking at the this this uh, notebook and we are trying to check like where there are like any uh, duplicate values because typically when like uh, data is reported higher it's because like we didn't handle duplicates well so what we see is that in on some day in the past there are some like duplicate records being inserted so uh, this is actually coming from our seed file uh, that we manipulated uh, but we can ignore that for now so uh, what we see here is that uh, this is like what we need to investigate why these duplicate records are coming in and how can we avoid this and what's the impact on the total sales. So for that, we are preparing this data set uh, here that we can then use in Python uh, to, to report back to our customer what's the impact on the total sales. So the cool thing is that you can actually refer uh, to the data that is being retrieved in your DBT SQL within Python. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Python uh, to, to check how many duplicated transactions exist. Uh, so what we've seen is that there are uh, like about four duplicates uh, and about 100 transactions. Uh, but of course, the number of transactions, that's one thing, but maybe they are on the most, uh, the highest revenue, maybe the revenue impact is much higher. So what we see is like it's, about 5%. Uh, so it seems like number of transactions and, and uh, the impact on revenue is, is pretty similar. So we also can see like uh, on how many customers uh, this issue has occurred. Uh, so what we see is for three different customers, we've seen this uh, and all the rest is, uh, there's no other uh, customers that have duplicated sales. So this kind of information we can then uh, report back to our, our uh, customer uh, and uh, tell him a little bit like that we understand the issue uh, and, 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 and that we are going to resolve it as soon as possible. So like in this case, it's a source system. So we probably would have to make some fixes in the source system uh, to, to resolve this. So this is all of scope for GBT for now. But let's now like try to uh, uh, write some tests that instead of our customer contacting us, we would get a, an alert on our system when this issue occurs again. So for that, uh, we can also use uh, our, uh, our system, our extension. So imagine we can like here in stage payments, we are like retrieving all these forms. So basically what we want to do here is we want to uh, check if there is any duplicates coming through and in that case we want to uh, uh, generate an exception so that we can do using dbt tests so let's do that so with data pilot we can actually uh, uh, with the documentation editor we can actually uh, uh, add a custom test to do so so let's do that now so Let's add a test here, custom test. So basically what we want to do is, please 
curated test that ensures that all rows are distinct. So what's cool about this test generation is that it actually uh, knows about which packages that you're using. So it will uh, tell you that because you are using dbt utils, it will point you to unique combination of column columns. Uh, and, and then actually you can uh, just click the insert and then this custom test will be inserted into your uh, Nakayama file. So let's have a look at that. Oh, yeah, I first need to save it. Save changes. So let's have a look. So as you can see, we have inserted this uh, test. Uh, so uh, this is extremely useful for because lots of people don't might not know about which test exists in DVT utils, uh, but they they might be able they will be able to explain in natural language what what they want to test. And uh, our extension can then point you to the right test within this package. So that's like a huge time saver, right? Okay, let me now go back to the uh, presentation. So to summarize, uh, with our latest feature of notebooks, you can combine Jinja and Python in the same notebook. So uh, within your organization, uh, there might be some people really skilled at Python, so they can like uh, uh, create custom templates uh, like that can be reused by everyone within the organization. You can then like plug these within the extension uh, in the right places so that uh, everyone can uh, like save lots of time uh, to do like uh, ad hoc analysis and debugging. So you can also share these notebooks within your organization. Uh, so, so you can uh, use them to tell a data story for your stakeholders, uh, so they can have a look at like how you came to certain conclusions. So, it's a really great tool uh, to share knowledge or to uh, enhance uh, troubleshoot troubleshooting flow workflows and share them within your organization. Okay, so. Also, we want to uh, uh, mention that now uh, the extension that you know uh, for dbt core is now fully compatible with dbt cloud. Uh, so uh, dbt recently reached out to us. Uh, so this is really great news. So now everyone, like every dbt user can enjoy all the features uh, from our extension. So it's super easy to switch between dbt core and cloud. Um, so please check out also the dbt labs blog post uh, where we where where dbt explains a bit like how the collaboration went on uh, so yeah uh, we'll share the link with you later okay so now let's move on to anton uh, he will tell us a bit his experience uh, with the extension at hubspot thank you michael Yes, as I said, I have been using this extension for a long time now, and it definitely has evolved quite a bit in recent years. And we just saw it, it's now powered by AI. How cool. But my all time favorite feature is a lineage view, especially after the team added column level lineage. This is my go to view whenever I do troubleshooting, impact analysis, or trying to untangle those Christmas light decks, if you know what I mean. Can't even count how many hours it saved me. Another feature that you might find quite helpful and a huge time saver is a doc generating tool. Who enjoys writing docs, right? Offload it, be lazy, don't do it, check it out. And another one, we haven't tried it yet, but it looks really promising. So at HubSpot, we try to live and breathe by our standards. You know, all this uh, SQL style, data modeling rules, performance optimization guidelines, all that. And having a tool that proactively checks whatever you do in your IDE against those internally defined best practices as you do it would be amazing. I'm really excited to give it a try. Uh, I believe they call it project governance. Check it out. 
And these are just a few examples of what we can offload of our plate to be more productive. And it's definitely not limited to this extension. My point is, let's be lazy. Let's offload whatever we can, fully or partially. Let's be high performers. Uh, uh, and this is the list of resources you can check out to have a better sense of what this extension has to offer.